Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to solve systems of linear equation word problems that involve money and mixture. And we're going to do so algebraically. Now these word problems are a little more challenging than the ones we looked at in the last video. Our first example, Pam has $4.60 worth of dimes and quarters in her change purse. If the number of quarters she has is two less than triple the number of dimes she has, how many of each coin does she have? So we need to start by defining our variables. So we're going to use two variables. So we need to define x and y. So the number of quarters is defined in terms of the number of dimes. So let's let x be the number of dimes then. And y is the number of quarters. We could easily switch this up and it won't have any effect on our problem. So now the number of quarters she has is two less than triple the number of dimes. So that means y, which is the number of quarters, triple the number of dimes, so that's 3x, two less than that is minus two. Then we know that there's $4.60 worth of dimes and quarters, so each dime is 10 cents, each quarter is 25 cents, and that's $4.60 in total. Now, before we substitute, I want to eliminate the decimals here. We don't have to, but just to go through that process, we would want to multiply this equation by 100, and that equation would become 10x plus 25y equals 460. When we multiply each coefficient by 100, the decimal place will move two places to the right. Now we know that y equals 3x minus 2, so we can substitute that into the new equation that we got. So we have 10x plus 25 times what well, y is equal to in terms of x, so 3x minus 2 equals 460. So we have 10x plus 75x minus 50 equals 460. 85x minus 50 equals 460. Add 50 to both sides. So 85x equals 510. Divide both sides by 85 and we have x equals 6. So if x equals 6, we need to figure out what the question was asking for. So how many of each coin? So we do need to find the number of quarters. So y equals 3x minus 2. So y equals 3 times 6 minus 2. y equals 18 minus 2. y equals 16. So she has six dimes and 16 quarters. Now, looking at this word problem and the solution in particular, we could have easily done this with just a single variable. And we have done this with a single variable. We're now just looking at these problems from the approach of a system of equations. So in order to create a system, we need two variables. Okay, but most of the examples in this and the last video could easily be done using just a single variable. So it's nice to see that there's two different approaches that would give us the same solution. Our next example, a scientist is trying to mix together 10 liters of a solution that is 38% acid. She only has two solutions that have 30% and 70% acid. How many liters of each solution must she use? So we're going to start by defining our let statement. So we'll let x be the liters of the 30% acid solution. And we'll let y be the liters of 70% acid solution. Now, last time we did a mixture question like this, we used the table, and I would suggest doing the same here. So we have the 30% acid, the 70% acid, 
and the mixture is going to be 38% acid. So those define the rows. So the column, so this one is the amount, so that's going to be in liters. Then we have our percentage column, and then we have our total. Okay, so filling in this table, we know we have X liters of 30% acid, we have Y liters of 70% acid, the total needs to be 10 liters of 38% acid, our percentages, so we have 0 0.3, 0 0.7, and 0.38 as the decimal equivalents of each percentage. Multiplying across, total, we would have 0.3x, 0.7y, and 3.8. So the two equations that we're going to get, because remember, we have two variables, we need two equations to create our system. So use this column, we would have x plus y equals 10, there's our first equation. And the last column gives us 0.3x plus 0.7y equals 3.8. So this system could be solved either using elimination or substitution. Most of the time we're going to eliminate the decimal here, so let's do that first. We'll multiply this equation by 10. So the new system is going to be x plus y equals 10, 3x plus 7y equals 38. So let's solve this one with elimination. So let's eliminate the x variable. So we'll multiply the first equation by negative 3. So that gives us negative 3x minus 3y equals negative 30. And 3x plus 7y equals 38. We can add the two equations together. That's going to eliminate the x variable. We'd have 0x. 4y equals positive 8. Divide both sides by 4. y would be equal to 2. Now we need to find x because it wants to know how much of each solution she used. So x plus 2 equals 10. So x equals 8. So she used 8 liters of the 30% acid solution and 2 liters of the 70% acid solution. Now, logically this should make sense because if our final solution was 38% acid, we should definitely be using more 30% than 70%, and our solution verifies that fact. John is getting ready to plant his vegetable garden. He bought compost, which costs $7 per cubic foot, and topsoil, which costs $5 per cubic foot. If he bought a total of 12 cubic feet of compost and topsoil mix and spent $68, how many cubic feet of compost did he buy? So again, start with our last statement. So we'll let x be the cubic feet of compost. And we'll let y be equal to the cubic feet of topsoil. Again, a table would be a good choice to approach this problem with. So we have compost, we have topsoil, and we have our mixture. That defines our rows. So we have cubic feet. We have cost, so money, so I'll just put the money symbol up top, and we have total. Okay, so let's fill this out. So we know we have x cubic feet of compost, we have y cubic feet of topsoil, and he bought 12 total cubic feet of both. Compost costs $7, topsoil costs $5. Now, they didn't tell us how much the mixture cost per cubic feet. They just told us that he spent $68 in total. So we can leave this cell open, and we just get 68 here. 
So the total he spent in compost was 7x and topsoil 5y. Now we could figure out what they charge per cubic feet, but we don't have to, right? We already have all the information that we're looking for. So this first column gives us the equation x plus y equals 12. And the second column gives us the equation 7x plus 5y equals 68. So let's use substitution here. So we'll subtract x from both sides. So y equals 12 minus x. And we'll substitute that in for y in the second equation. So we have 7x plus 5 times the quantity 12 minus x. Let's fix that parentheses. Equals 68. So now we'll solve. We'll start by distributing the 5 on the left side. So plus 60 minus 5x equals 68. Combining like terms on the left side, we have 2x plus 60 equals 68. Subtract 60 from both sides. 2x equals 8. Divide both sides by 2. x equals 4. Now, going back to the question, they only wanted us to determine how many cubic feet of compost he bought. X is the cubic feet of compost. We solve for X, so we're done. So he bought four cubic feet of compost. If we had to figure out the topsoil, we would just plug that value four in for X into one of our two equations and solve. Our last example, Henry invested $5,000 into two bank accounts, part at 6% annual interest, the rest at 4% annual interest. If the combined interest earned in both accounts after one year was $240, how much money did he invest in each account? So we'll let X be equal to the, let's just use an abbreviation here. So we'll say that's the money in the 6% account, and we'll let y be the money in the 4% account. So we have our variables defined. Again, we can use a table in this situation. So we have a 6% interest, we have a 4% interest, and we have the total for his money. Our first column is going to be the amount of money that he invested. Then the next column is going to be the percentage that each is invested at. And then we have our total column. Okay, so the amount of money he invests at 6% interest is X. The amount at 4% interest is Y. And the total amount he invested is $5,000. The percentage, so this is 0.06. 0 0.04. They don't tell us a combined interest, so we'll leave this entry blank. And they did tell us the total interest he earned was $240. The amount from the 6% interest account would be 0.06x. And the amount from the 4% interest account would be 0.04y. Now one thing to point out, when we've used this table before, sometimes this second column was money right, how much per pound, or uh, how much per cubic feet in the last example. But notice the money is the fixed amounts now, right, he's taking part of it into a 6% account and part of it into a 4% account. Okay, so the second column is going to be the percentage, which means the first column is going to be the amount of money, just in case you were a little confused there. Now, let's use the columns to create our system of equations. So we'd have x plus y equals 5,000, and we'd have 0.06x plus 0.04y equals 240. So let's try to solve this without getting rid of the decimals. So let's use the decimals here, and let's use elimination. 
So let's multiply this first equation by negative 0 0.04. So our system of equations is going to be negative 0.04x minus 0.04y equals, so we'd have 0 0.04 times 5,000, so we'd have 200, negative 200. And then we have 0 0.06x plus 0.04y equals 240. That's a negative sign. So we can add the two equations together. We'd have 0.02x, 0y equals 40. So we can divide both sides by 0.02. So x is going to be equal to, well, if we're doing this by hand, what I would encourage you to do is move this decimal place 2 over. So to move this decimal place 2 over, so this is really thinking about 4,000 divided by 2. Much easier to think about than trying to divide by the decimal. So that's going to be 2,000. And if x is 2,000, so we'd have 2,000 plus y equals 5,000. Subtract 2,000 on both sides. I think we can see what our answer is going to be. y is going to be 3,000. So the question, always read the question before you answer. How much money did he invest in each account? Okay, so we do want both. So $2,000 invested at 6%, 6% interest, and $3,000 invested at 4% interest. Okay, so there we have a few more word problems that we saw with a system of linear equations that were a little more challenging. Okay, and maybe because we had to create the table right? So it was a little extra work. Now, again, all the word problems that we did, we could solve with two, with one variable for most of them. We're just giving us another option if we want to create a system of equations, right? So use the table, try to simplify things. And again, as always, focus on getting from the word problem to the system of equations. Once we're there, then it's just solving a system like we've been doing in the past. Okay, but the key for these problems is making sure that system of equations is set up correctly.